Although Resorts World finds itself in a challenging location on the north end of the Strip, it's quickly emerging as one of my favorite home-based resorts in all of Vegas. Let me tell you why. Resorts World offers three unique hotel brands under one roof. Crockford's is the nicest, Conrad is mid-tier, and Hilton is their baseline offering. On this occasion, I was offered a complimentary Hilton Deluxe room based on my play within the Genting Rewards program, which covers the cost of the room and the resort fee, so I was free rolling. If you're not on a comp, this room starts at around $79 plus fees midweek, but pricing can escalate pretty quickly depending on demand. A quick parking tip. Whether you're staying at the hotel or just visiting the casino, follow the signs for the hotel parking ramp, which is actually connected to the resort. It'll save you about 1.7 million steps when compared to the other disconnected parking ramp that will force you to endure the outdoors on your hike in. Considering this is their least expensive hotel brand, I was pretty taken aback by how luxurious the hotel lobby felt and lines were pretty manageable. That said, don't check in in person. Use the Hilton Honors app. The app allows you to check in from your phone the night before and select the exact room you want in the hotel tower, including what floor you want to be on and what direction you want to face, meaning you get to choose your own view. You also get to skip the lines the day of your stay. You'll be alerted when your room is ready, your phone acts as your room key, and you can head straight up to your room. On the way up to my 59th floor accommodation, I couldn't help but notice how elegant the elevator lobby and hotel hallways felt. Hilton Deluxe Rooms at Resorts World offer 400 square feet of space and my first impressions were that it felt pretty luxurious for a baseline accommodation. Everything, including the light fixtures, furniture, bed, etc. were in great condition and brand new. The king bed was flanked by end tables that offered traditional outlets, USB ports, and even a wireless charge pad atop the clock radio. Above the bed was a large portrait of something abstract and mysterious, and I don't really get art per se, but I thought it was cool that they built a light bar in the top of the bed's headboard to illuminate said piece of art. The TV and its navigation were modern and gave guests the ability to stream Netflix or even Amazon Prime. And underneath the TV was both a mini bar fridge packed with overpriced drinks and an empty fridge that I stocked with cheap beer from the Walgreens across the street. Casino resort carpeting is always wild to hide wear patterns and staining, but I thought this room's was especially hideous. No biggie, it was in great condition. The bathroom had a modern and classy vibe. The single sink vanity was topped by a large illuminated mirror and I thought the glass enclosed shower had some wow factor with brass fixtures, a clean tile look, a bench, and bath products provided. The way I'd describe the bathroom is quiet luxury. It was just nice without being over the top. So what's not to like? When I do room reviews, I get down on my hands and knees looking for rogue hair, stain scuffs, damage, etc. And this was an exceptionally clean room. I found none of that here, which is pretty rare. One weird quirk though, I found a tiny pair of black men's boots in the closet. So Mr. Chow, if you're looking for your boots, they're with Lost and Found. Resorts World also charges $18 a day for parking, unless you've earned elite status within the Genting Rewards Loyalty Program. Charging for parking is a pretty bold strategy, considering the resort's challenging location. And on the topic of location, Resorts World is hardly centrally located. It is nearby other properties like Circus Circus, Fountain Blue, and even Sahara, but if you're looking to go to Fremont Street or The Strip, you're either catching a bus or taking a cheap Uber or Lyft. While a lot of people view that location as a negative, I actually kind of view it as a positive at this point. I don't mind being separated from the madness. Let's shift focus to the resort experience at Resorts World. The district is the first thing you see when entering from the south, and it's a pretty impressive introduction to the property. While the district is home to dining destinations, lounges, and retail outlets, the star of the show is the Orb. The casino floor is massive and offers a collection of modern slot games and table game minimums for games like craps and blackjack for $15 in the morning hours, but extended to $25 later in the evening when I buzz by. I had a pretty solid craps run at one point and can confirm beverage services on point. I had a fresh Coors Light in hand every 20 minutes or so, which admittedly got a little dicey. Yikes. 
Uniquely, you can also use Resorts World's phone app to load funds onto slot machines and even buy chips at table games. Art scattered about the resort is unique and fun to seek out and includes a tribute to Liberace, decorative chandeliers, a balled up car, legitimately unique wall art, and even a statue of a dog smooching a rabbit on the back of a hippopotamus. My favorite art in the joint though is the Stardust sign. A nod to the past as Stardust once stood on this exact spot. Being on an island at the north end of the Strip, Resorts World does a good job of offering a ton of dining options that span the price spectrum with global influences from around the world that includes places like Mexico, Japan, Europe, and an American steakhouse, among others. For the herbivores among us, the Crossroads Kitchen serves plant-based fare, and Suns Out Buns Out attracts long lines for breakfast, serves egg dishes, and showcases a pretty photogenic mascot out front. My go-to dining destination at Resorts World is their famous food street eats, a collection of over 15 quick serve restaurants that serves everything from dumplings, sushi, and Asian rice bowls to burgers, fish and chips, and Nashville style hot chicken. Most meals cost around $20, so it's fast, relatively affordable, and of higher quality than you get at a fast food chain. While not found in Resorts World, Tacos El Gordo is across the street and is absurdly popular. Lines can get pretty intimidating. Ordering can also be confusing for a newbie. What you'll want to do is get in line for the meat that you want, and then when you get to the front of the line, you order the items that you desire. It's delicious. As was the case with dining, there are no shortage of spots to grab a drink, but notable options include Gatsby's Cocktail Lounge at the front end of the casino and the centrally located Crystal Bar, both of which boast a unique aesthetic. A selection of over 8,000 wines are served at Wally's alongside pizza, steaks, or even a charcuterie board. And Golden Monkey is a tiki lounge that features island decor. You can even enjoy a cocktail alongside a cigar at eight. The Dog House is a sports bar that doubles as a sports book and has a fun, high energy, upbeat vibe to it. My wife and I recently swung into the Here Kitty Kitty Vice Den, a speakeasy located in the famous food street eats behind the facade of this restaurant. One of the shelving units in the back is the secret door. Our drinks were 20 plus dollars each, but they were strong and the vibe was pretty enjoyable. Definitely recommended. As mentioned, if overpriced casino lounge beers aren't your jam, hop across the street to Walgreens to stock up or grab a bevy or two for the road. Resorts World's rooftop pool deck has nine pools that are spread out over five and a half acres, which include a kiddie pool and an infinity pool overlooking strip resorts to the south. They even have a collection of yard games to help pass the time. It's one of the best relaxing pool scenes in all of Las Vegas. A huge perk for conventioneers, you can leverage the Vegas Loop to get to and from the Las Vegas Convention Center in a Tesla vehicle in an underground tunnel. A day pass costs just $5. The Boring Company's Loop system has plans to eventually connect the entirety of Las Vegas, but right now is limited to the Convention Center and a few surrounding resorts, although it is slowly expanding its reach. As long as you're okay with being separated from the madness on the Strip, Resorts World could be a really solid option. I've now stayed here twice and I've enjoyed both stays. I look forward to returning again and again. Resorts World offers an elegant casino, a glut of food and drink options, one hell of a rooftop pool deck, and legitimately nice rooms that won't typically destroy your checking account. I also love mobile check-in, room keys, and that the Hilton app allows you to select your desired floor, room, and view. Pretty unique stuff. One suggestion, if it isn't much more expensive, consider upgrading to a Conrad branded room. They offer an additional 50 square feet of space and an extra dose of niceness. I enjoyed my Hilton Deluxe room, but I enjoyed my experience in a Conrad branded room just a smidge more, and I'll link out to my full review in the description below.